Hi everyone, this is Ben with Dream Factory. In this quick tutorial, I'm going to talk about Dream Factory's MongoDB REST API. So Dream Factory comes with a built-in MongoDB uh, database and API that's ready to use. So this is really, really convenient for just getting up and running with MongoDB. So if you go to Bitnami and pick any of these installers, it's MongoDB is ready to go, and that's it. So when you install the product, when you install Dream Factory, hop into services, you'll see MongoDB here. And you can look at how it's set up just as a name, label, and description. That's the API and all of the configuration information for the local version of MongoDB running either on your server or on your desktop or somewhere in, in the cloud if you install on Amazon. Wherever you install it, MongoDB will be there ready to use. So just as a username and password defaults here, you can change this if you want. And that's it. You're ready to go. So the other thing I want to point out that's really important is that you can also connect to any MongoDB database uh, for which you have credentials. So you can add your own if you want. So if you have MongoDB running um, on a server, it could be running on Dream Factory server, it could be running on your own server, it could be running really anywhere, Dream Factory can proxy in API calls to that MongoDB instance running wherever it's running. So if you wanted your own, you would just put in your name, label, description, and then go into config put in your connection string. You can either type in your username, password information, host, and all that. You can also just add uh, key value pairs uh, of like username and password, anything else that you need in the connection string, and save it, and you have a secure connection to MongoDB. So what we're going to do real quickly is just show a couple of examples of using the MongoDB API for the built-in MongoDB database. And of course, this would work the same uh, for any MongoDB instance running uh, wherever it's running. So for the local instance here, since I'm not connecting to my own MongoDB instance, I have a totally empty MongoDB database. And so there's nothing I can do with it yet. I need to create um, some tables and put some data in there. And I'm going to use the API to do that. So the first thing I'll do is just verify that this is an empty database. I can go to MongoDB slash underscore schema and try it out. And of course, there's nothing there. That's expected. So what I need to do is... Um, just create a quick table. And I'm going to do something really simple. Uh, just like in the SQLite example, I'm going to post a contacts table. Just a simple piece of JSON. So I'll go here and give it a name. Oops, copy this in. Uh, name label and the plural name of that table. So a very simple contacts object. And NoSQL is nice because you can just start posting to it and it will start um, creating fields on the fly. So then do that. So that's it, and click Try It Out. And then you'll see that it just posted to the MongoDB schema, and it returned to 200, which is good. And then um, what I can do is just quickly verify, make sure that that resource is there, I'll try it out, and we see that the contact is in there. So that's good news. And um, now we have a table, but we don't have any data in it. So if I go down and start to do some basic create, read, update, delete operations, um, I can start doing that. So I'm going to scroll down, and you'll see here that there are a bunch of ways to create records and get records and delete records um, by ID, etc. Typical REST API operations. So, of course, if I do a get records here, I'm not going to get anything back. I'll just put in contact name and do a get. And you'll see that it's an empty resource. So we're going to post something. So very easy to do that. I'm going to hop into the post action, the uh, syntax here, the API name, the table, and then the table name, and we're just going to post some JSON to that. So our table name is contact, and the thing here that you can do is you can always click on the model schema to see what this looks like. So you can use this as a reference. What I'm going to do is just remove this now and hop over. And just like our previous example with the other databases, I'm going to create a several new contacts, just a couple. And those are just going to get written directly to MongoDB. That's it. Very simple. Key value pairs, a name, and a phone number. And that will just post. There's a bunch of other information you can put in here. We won't get into that in this tutorial, uh, but pretty straightforward. So try it out. And we see that we posted to MongoDB underscore table, and then the contact table is the name, the one we just created and it's going to return a 200 and give me back two IDs uh, that are unique. So every MongoDB uh, document, i.e. record, has a unique ID, which you can then use to fetch, to delete, to update, all that good stuff. Um, so 
So that's what happened there. Now let's verify, let's close this and then verify that we can then now actually go and get those records. So we'll go back to our Git call and verify that we got two records back. Great, we did. Those are the two ones we created. And there are a bunch of different parameters uh, that you can pass in. So this is really nice because you can actually do SQL actions on your NoSQL database. So we'll do a, a very simple example. Let's say that we, we have two records in here. Let's just say we want to get people whose name starts with B. So we can do name like uh, B and then uh, percent here, wildcard, and then run that. And that's going to get just the person whose name is Ben in this trivial example. And then you can do other SQL operations like if you want exact matches on the name Ben, run that. Of course, that'll return the same thing. So this is very nice because with Mongo, you can run queries using Mongo's syntax. You can also append BSON syntax to any of these API calls. If you look at that, you'll see that you've got the contact and then appended with a filter. You could append BSON or else you can just put in raw SQL-like syntax to the API and get your data back. There's a bunch of other capabilities, limits, orders, um, pagination, grouping, um, passback IDs, a whole bunch of other stuff that's covered in our documentation at wiki.dreamfactory.com. So that's it. It took us just a couple of minutes to uh, create a table in MongoDB and get records and post records. And uh, it's really, really easy. MongoDB is very nice. So hopefully this is helpful to anyone that's using MongoDB. And that's it. Thanks.